Get started. Uh, good morning and welcome to the second webinar in a series presented by FSA North Dakota and NDSU Extension. My name is Dave Ripplinger. I'm an economic specialist with NDSU Extension. Uh, we're once again happy to partner with FSA on this program. Uh, as Miranda just pointed out, uh, we're going to have everybody on uh, mute and lights out. Uh, but don't hesitate uh, throughout the, the webinar today to ask questions using the, the chat feature. Uh, we're going to start today with Kim Paulson. Um, she's going to speak and then take questions immediately after her presentation. Uh, so, so be ready for that. Uh, and then finally, if for any reason you fall off the call uh, or, or have to leave for some reason, we are recording and we will post it to the NDSU Farm Management website. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kim. All right, thanks, Dave. Um, I'm just gonna pull up my, my slides here, hopefully. Okay, is that working? <laughs> okay, great. Let me uh, pull up this. Okay, so welcome to today's uh, presentation and thank you for joining us today. I know you are very busy this time of year. It's a great day outside, I hear. So we uh, will jump right in and, and uh, discuss the various loan programs available to you at FSA. Um, Dave mentioned my name is Kim Paulson and I am a farm loan specialist with the state office here in North Dakota. Uh, I am one of uh, five team members, um, and today I'm going to talk to you about our farm loans. So in today's topic, we're going to talk about a general overview of the farm loan programs, some tools that are available to you, not only um, during the pandemic, but also during um, our after hours uh, from the FSA business centers when they're not open. We have some tools to help you find resources. And then we're going to talk about some of the um, servicing that FLP is doing during the pandemic. So as they say in showbiz, let's start the show. So first topic we're going to do is a general um, overview of our farm loan programs. We have a direct loan program and a guaranteed loan program. On our direct side, um, those are funded entirely by FSA and serviced by FSA. Congress uh, sets out a pot of money each fiscal year. So those monies are allocated to different funds of uh, types of loans. Uh, and because of that, our funds are limited. So we call those loan limits. We set a specific dollar amount that applicants can apply for and they can't exceed those loan amounts in hopes that we spread that money out uh, so it becomes available for everyone. Um, also, we don't compete with commercial creditors. So we limit the maximum um, term, the maximum term that people can apply for FSA assistance. For operating loans, those are seven calendar years. And then for farm ownership loans, those term limits are 10 years. And there are some exceptions to those. Flipping gears on the guaranteed loan side, uh, guaranteed loans are funded and serviced entirely by the guaranteed lender participating in the, the program with FSA. Um, with the guaranteed loan program, FSA uh, like uh, guarantees repayment of the note if the borrower defaults on that loan. And generally that's anywhere from 85 to 95% of repayment of principal balances um, if there's a default. Um, and there are loan maximums set with that program as well. However, there's no term limit that will restrict you from continuing to apply for the guaranteed loan program. As long as your lender is participating in the program and Congress continues to fund it, we are set so you can continue to apply for guaranteed loans. We do have targeted funding available to a specific group, um, minority farmers and ranchers, and then also our beginning farmers. In order to be eligible for the beginning farmer programs, one of the requirements is that you have to be within your first 10 years of farming. And we do that because we want those young farmers to get started and to get enrolled and, and participate in farming. So we set aside money for them. Um, one of the, the perks of being a beginning farmer is that your loans would be funded ahead of non-beginning farmer loans. So if ever there was a shortage in funds, uh, beginning farmers would get uh, priority in funding. And it does give them three extra years to apply for operating assistance. Um, I said before, a regular non-beginning farmer gets seven years to apply for operating. Um, with the beginning farmer program, they get 10, so they get three extra years. 
one of the misconceptions about the beginning farmer program is that they get reduced interest rates. And that's, that's actually not very true. They get uh, the same rate as everyone with the exception of the beginning farmer down payment program. With that, because they're participating with a commercial lender, they get a reduced rate for that program. But other than that, all beginning farmers get the same interest rate. Okay, so let's dive into more of the direct loan program and discuss that. So on the direct side, our, all of our loans are at a fixed interest rate and you will get the benefit of the lesser interest rate either at the time of loan closing or loan approval. So you don't have to worry about that lock-in period that some of those commercial lenders have. We're gonna give you uh, the best rate that's available at either of those two times. For those who are interested, here's our April interest rates. Um, you can see that the farm ownership rate right now for April is 3% and operating is at two and three eighths. So they're still very low. Um, with the types of loans we have under our direct program, we have farm ownership loans, and those can be used to purchase land, uh, make capital improvements or expand your operation. And we talked about those loan limits and uh, the maximum loan amount that someone can apply for is 600,000. And then we also have our farm ownership microloan program and now it can be used for the same purposes. It's just a simplified application process and it's reduced down to 50,000 instead of that 600,000. Uh, the nice thing with microloans is they do not count against your uh, term assistance. So as long as you can fund your operation within $50,000 or less, you can get microloans for as long as you want with FSA. Here's just a general overview of, for some of those visual people out there that explains the types of programs we have, the loan amounts, and then some of the rates uh, attached to those programs. Um, on the operating side, those are for your annual seed inputs, um, equipment, livestock, any necessities to keep and maintain your farming operation. Those are termed as operating loans. The maximum loan amount for those is 400,000. And then just like we had microloans for the farm ownership program, we also have those for operating. And um, same thing, 50,000 is the max and it's a simplified application process. And here you have a, just a general overview of those programs on the operating side. And of course we have our youth loan program and those are available to aspiring farmers who are ages 10 to 20. And they have to be connected with some sort of agricultural youth organization, such as 4-H, FFA, or even a tribal uh, youth groups. And lastly, we have our emergency loans. And if you've been impacted by a declared natural disaster, you may be eligible to apply for an emergency loan. And the maximum loan limits for that is 50,000. So it's a little bit higher um, than our operating loans. Um, but sometimes that's not always the best option for you because these interest rates are a little higher. Um, emergency loans can be used to restore or replace essential property that was damaged, pay essential farm living, um, and pay off certain debts. So there's a list of uh, lots of options there that emergency loans can be used for. And guaranteed loan program, um, all of those loan purposes for uh, farm ownership, to purchase land, to uh, fund the reorganization of your farm, to make capital purchases, all of those same loan types roll over to the guaranteed loan program. Um, and as you can see here, the maximum loan amount for the guaranteed program is 1,776,000. Um, and then there's an overview shot of some of the loans in there. And just like the microloans, there is an easy guaranteed operating program as well. So it's a simplified application process. And as you can see on the screen, that loan amount is 100,000. So we're, we're trying to make some easy, fast loans if you need that, um, but there is a restriction on the dollar amount. Moving on to our second topic, we have tools available to assist you. And this is one of the topics I'm most excited about because here we get to showcase some of the hard work that's been done by our national office and, and uh, some of the collaboration um, that's being done to help you get assistance after hours when FSA is closed. Um, one of these tools is called Your Guide to FSA Farm Loans. It is a brochure that's available in English and Spanish and you can get that either from the service center or you can use the link at fsa.usda.gov, scroll down to the bottom of that website and look for farm loan programs, and then you'll see this brochure um, at the very bottom. 
And that explains the whole process from the time of the application through the time that your loan is paid in full. So it gives you a really good guide of uh, our expectations and what we can do to help you. And then next we have our farmers.gov. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this site, but this really is a portal that's been designed specifically for you, our farmers and ranchers. And we really do hope that you folks are taking advantage of this. Um, National Office sent out a survey to all of the, not all, but to selected farmers and ranchers and got their feedback on what we can do as an agency to improve service and improve turnaround times. And based on that survey, they've um, created certain portions of this website designed to help you. So one of the things, it has links to FLP fact sheets, there's some interactive questionnaires, um, and when we say interactive questionnaires, I know some people are thinking, well, it's going to take me 30 minutes to get through that. These are in five clicks or less, so it's, it's a great tool, um, quick and easy, and we'll go through some examples. There's also the service center locator, um, and then if you need assistance with writing your business plan, there's a link on there that will connect you to a third party that has great videos and some handouts available to help you start with your business plan. And then for those who have that USDA level two e-authentication, you can view your loan information 24 seven on this secure site within farmers.gov. So let's take a look at one of those interactive questionnaires. Um, here we have our farm loan discovery tool. You click on the view tool and it will, again, in five clicks or less, it will tell you what you need. Um, and here we have our uh, H2A visa checklist. For those who have uh, maybe some immigrant workers coming in from other countries, this will give you a checklist on how to get the process started and what you need. And then there's also a disaster discovery tool where um, it will guide you through what uh, disaster programs uh, or loans might be available to assist you to get through that, that disaster. So on the farm loan discovery tool itself, we'll take a walkthrough of what that looks like. You click on the view tool, it brings you to this uh, section. And the first question it says is, are you looking for a farm loan? Yes or no? You click yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you looking to fund an agriculture or youth project? Unfortunately, I'm a little over 20, so I say no. Um, and what are you looking to fund? Are you looking to fund just an operating loan or a farm ownership loan? In my case, I checked both. And then it wants to know the dollar limit. So based on how you answer those, it's going to give you um, your best, <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's going to give you the best loan options for you. And then you can also download the quick application guide. And I should just note that it's going to tell you what loan you should apply for. It doesn't give you, um, you're not eligible. It doesn't mean you're eligible. It doesn't mean you're approved and it doesn't mean you're getting funding. It's just going to tell you what is best to apply for. And then you can download this application quick guide. And here it's a great visual tool that tells you, here's what we need you to do. Once the complete application is given to FSA, here's what we will do. And then it walks you through the steps to get loan closing and funding and uh, get you money in your pockets. And then um, it also gives you uh, an option to download the application package along with instructions so you know how to accurately complete each form that's in that application packet. And then it details um, some of the documentations required to go with your application. And when we get everything we need, that's called a complete application. And that's really what starts the process for FSA. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few more slides. Um, and there's also connections to your service center so that you know um, who to look for, who will be working on your loan, and it will give you the name of those loan officers and telephone numbers to connect with them. And as I mentioned, if you have that level two e-authentication, you can actually check your loan balances 24 seven and get your interest credit statements. And that's kind of helpful um, at the tax season. You know, we all need to provide our documentation to our accountants. And instead of calling FSA or waiting for those business hours, you can do this in the comfort of your own home. Um, so it's available to individual borrowers. Right now, we don't have entity borrowers loaded in here, but that is something that the programmers are working on. Um, again, it's uh, available 24 seven, and it requires that level two e-authentication. It gives year-to-date information on all your loans for the past five years. 
and it allows you to view paid in full and restructured notes, and then it tracks transactions as well as payments. So here's just a screenshot of how it would look if you, with your level two, signed in. And you can see right away there's green and red on the screen. So um, it's a good indicator to know which notes are past due and which notes are on schedule. So in this case, red is past due. And you can see here, it gives you a complete view of all of your loans with FSA. So this is an account view. And then you can see if you uh, pull down on that little down carrot, it will give you information about your interest rate, um, the installment that was due and the amount that's due. And then also there's that uh, total payoff amount and that's for your entire account with FSA. So it summarizes all of your loans and puts them into that, that total uh, payoff. Uh, again, we encourage you to check with FSA just in case there's been a, a little hiccup with our accounting systems, but generally these are spot on, but it gives you a great estimate of what you can be looking for to pay off your loan. And then at the bottom, there's that, uh, take a look at that earned income, um, I'm sorry, interest paid statement. And you click on that link, and it will bring you to this next screen where it's going to detail um, your loans, and then it will give you the option to pick this year or the past five years, and then you, have, you can print that off. So for some of you that are thinking, hey, this is a great idea, how do I get there? So you sign up for your level EAuth just by going to farmers.gov, and then in the top right-hand corner, um, you'll see this uh, sign in or sign up, you click on that. And if you have your level two, you will simply click on that login at the very bottom of the screen there. If you don't, you just continue to scroll down on that web page, and it will bring you to this. And these are instructions that says, you know, we need to check with your service center to make sure you have your proper email or the correct email, I should say, and that we actually have a record for you in FSA. And then from there, you click on this, uh, let's see, what's that say? EAuth account registration page. So you click on that and it brings you to this section where it says, how would you like to register? Okay, you're gonna be a customer, you click on that. And then it says, please enter your email address. So you enter your email address, you click submit. And it now sends a little confirmation that says, hey, we're gonna send you an email with additional instructions. So when you get the email, you simply uh, follow the instructions. It's gonna tell you, you need to create a password. And then you need to validate your account with FSA. So you take your driver's license, you take, um, maybe you have to do this by video for now until the service centers are fully opening, um, but you just need to take your driver's license with a picture of your smiling face and then the uh, service center employee will validate that. And within 24 hours, you'll have access to your accounts. So it's pretty easy. Um, lastly, we're gonna talk about uh, FLP servicing during the pandemic. Um, we strive to provide quality service and our offices are open and they are um, continuing to take applications. I mentioned earlier about the importance of a complete application and here's the reason why. Um, our, we are required to process applications in the order in which they were, were received based on the complete date. So if we both submit applications and yours is complete and mine is not, mine's gonna bounce down further on the list. And with our extended timeframes, we now have up to 45 days to get that information to FSA. So it can, it can bog down your timeframe to get your, your loan within 45 days. So it's important to give us all the information you need um, at that very first time um, you apply with, uh, with the loan. Um, again, use farmers.gov to assist in that completion process to know which documents to submit and which forms are required. And then um, we still require a feasible plan. What that means is you have to have enough cash inflow to pay all of your expenses. And then if you're applying for something other than an operating loan, meaning an annual operating loan, you still have to have a uh, long-term viability uh, operation. So you have to have a typical plan that cash flows as well, not only in your first year, but maybe your second and third years as well. Um, we've also, I'm sorry, we've also been creative if they're cl with our loan closings. And one of those is by doing video conferencing um, and as long as it doesn't require a notary. And we are working right now with the Secretary of State trying to come up with a remote notary system that would allow us to 
um, validate your identity and sign everything using this remote notary and getting documents filed electronically. Um, but for now, we still need wet signatures on promissory notes and security agreements, so those can be sent by mail. Once we get those back, we can uh, proceed with loan closing and release funds to you. Um, and then just to be uh, a note here, loan closings are not permitted to be strictly by mail um, or by use of digital signatures. And all of these are subject to change because we are getting guidance on pandemic updates uh, quite often. So what I say now might be subject to change. We've also relaxed uh, regulations as far as uh, processing timeframes. As I mentioned before, we extended that from 30 days to 45 days. And it, we are now allowing um, FSA employees to digitally sign documents and correspondence, which speeds up our time to get notifi notifications to you. Um, and then we're also um, closing loans so long as the lien can be perfected. Um, we are, if we're not able to do the proper lien search, we're still gonna go ahead with those loans um, as long as we can still perfect our lien. And then as far as servicing delinquent loans, um, we've extended those timeframes as well. And then we're also temporarily suspending uh, loan accelerations, non-judicial foreclosures and referring foreclosures to DOJ. And on the guaranteed sign, we're also um, allowing lenders to self-certify that they are going to be providing you with additional operating for your line of credit advances and also emergency uh, advances on lines of credit. Um, and then of course, FSA will uh, consider guaranteed loan requests to temporarily uh, defer payments if you cannot come up with a feasible plan. And then same as our servicing, we're uh, putting a temporary stop to some of those foreclosure actions. Um, that's all I have for you today. So any questions on farm loans at this time? Okay. Um, again, we urge you to contact your local FSA service center. And if you have questions or would you, if you would like additional information, and then please use that farmers.gov and check that out. And um, again, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time and stay safe. And thank you. Great. Thanks, Kim. Uh, you did a great job. Uh, next, we'll have uh, Matt Prendeville uh, provide some comments. All right, everyone, let me, I'm going to bring my slides up here and then I'll be with you here in a second. All right. So, um, again, my name is Matt Prindeville. I am a program specialist with FSA in the Price Support Division, um, and today I'm going to be talking about our commodity loans, or uh, what's called the Marketing Assistance Loans, and FSFLs, which are the Farm Storage Facility Loan um, that, that you can apply for. So our Marketing Assistance Loans, uh, these are marketing tools that are available to producers uh, beginning upon harvest. So the MAL, or the Marketing Assistance Loans, uh, this provides an influx of cash when the market prices are typically at harvest time lows, which allows the producer to delay the sale of the commodity until more favorable market conditions emerge. Um, with many producers use this as an option, um, it's, it's great for you know, any sort of cash flow that's, uh, that's needed. Um, and like I said, we have you know, very small loans and we also have very very large loans that um, you know, producers want to take out on their, on their grain. We offer two different loan types. Um, so I have on there that says CCC, uh, that's the Commodity Credit Corporation, which is the lending arm of FSA. Um, and these two loan types are, are the non-recourse loans and the recourse loans. Um, most producers in the state use the non-recourse loan, which uh, this loan can be redeemed by repayment or delivered at maturity to the Commodity Credit Corporation. The recourse loans, um, those cannot be delivered, um, but instead those are simply settled by repayment at principal plus interest. 
So I've got on here a list of the eligible commodities, um, barley, canola, large and small chickpeas, corn, cranby. Uh, we have dry peas, flax, grain sorghum, honey, oats, mustard, rapeseed, safflower, sesame, soybeans, sunflowers, lentils, wheat, and wool. Now, in order for a producer to be eligible, um, they need to be in compliance um, with, with all of our conservation as well as the wetland protection requirements. Uh, we need to have an acreage report on file, and it needs to account for all of the cropland um, that, that you are farming. Um, third main point of eligibility would be that the producer needs to, to retain beneficial interest in the commodity until loan is repaid or until CCC takes, takes title of that. Um, and we consider beneficial, um, beneficial interest as having title and control. Now, if, if there's ever a question on that, um, oftentimes we'll have e either a producer ask or an elevator call or a buyer and say, have we or have we not um, forfeited beneficial interest on this? Has it been given up? And oftentimes the very first step that we'll ask is that you provide the actual contract um, so that we can then determine if or if not um, beneficial interest has um, um, basically been given up or not. Now for eligible commodities, um, three main points again here, it, it needs to be produced and, and mechanically harvested and in a storable condition. Uh, it must be merchantable for food or feed and it must meet um, the CCC minimum grade and quality standards for a non-recourse loan. If a producer wants to request a loan, uh, the actual form is a CCC-666 form, and this can be submitted uh, to our offices via mail, fax, phone, or even electronically. Um, with every uh, loan request, there is a non-refundable loan service fee that is, is deducted from each loan at the time of disbursement. So we do have final loan availability dates, and we have three separate dates. We have January 31st, March 31st, and we have May 31st. January 31st would be for our, mo our mohair, unshorn pelts, and, and wool. Um, March 31st is going to be for our early harvested crops. So just a few examples, uh, barley, canola, oats, and wheat. And then for our late harvested, um, it would be May 31st. So corn, dry peas, sorghum, lentils, mustard, etc. So for our loan maturity dates, um, recently changed is the CARES Act of 2020, which was just recently passed, um, that allows for non-recourse loans. So remember, we have our non-recourse and our, and our uh, recourse loans, so this only applies to our non-recourse loans that are requested through September of 2020 to have a 12-month loan term. Normally, all of our commodity loans have a nine-month term. So loans requested um, beginning in October of 2020 will mature the last day of the, of the ninth calendar month after the month in which the loan is dispersed. So what's going to happen is any loan request that's taken in October, those now um, revert back to a nine-month loan. Now, any loans that are requested through September of 2020, every producer does have the option if they want to have just a nine-month loan if um, they choose not to go with the 12 month. And the county loan rates, uh, there is a website for that that I have provided on here. Um, and for that, uh, to just keep in mind that loan rates vary by county. So I didn't provide all of those because we would have had a, you know, a number of slides on here and going in and looking at each. and um, you know, each one, and some of those rates vary by just a few pennies, 
um, up to, you know, maybe up to 25, 35, 40 cents, you know, depending on, on the actual commodity. So our interest rates. Um, the interest rates charged on our marketing assistance loans is set at one percentage point above the Commodity Credit Corporation's cost of borrowing from the U.S. Treasury. So for our April 2020 interest would be 1.625%. So once a loan is dispersed, this rate is fixed, except uh, the interest rate for loans that are outstanding on January 1st is, is, is actually adjusted to reflect PCC's cost of borrowing on January 1st. So if, say, you as a producer um, request a loan in November and it has, and it has a nine-month maturity, um, and you, you will get November's interest rate, but then come January 1, that interest rate will change to whatever January's rate is, and it will remain at the January rate through the term of the loan. So with um, uh, the recent COVID activity and everything that's going on, um, we are advising all of our county offices um, uh, when it comes to social distancing that when it comes to conducting all the farm visits, um, this would be w when it's requested by the producer to measure quantities for loan, or if we do need to go out and perform a routine spot check of existing outstanding loan quantities. So if, if that happens, um, we have adopted the following actions um, to take place during one of these scheduled farm visits. So the FSA employee will contact the borrower. And at this time, no forms um, will require any sort of signature at the time of the actual visit. We just ask that you please ensure that your bins are unlocked prior to our arrival so that we can go in and, you know, whether it's take a sample or measure, um, so we can have access to that grain. Um, by the borrower, will be provided the date of the scheduled visit, when we anticipate that, uh, that we should be there, uh, the vehicle description, and then about how long the actual visit uh, will take. And uh, the county office telephone number will be provided um, to report any questions or concerns prior to FSA's arrival for the scheduled visit. So we're going to shift gears a little bit, and um, one of the other programs that we administer in the Price Support Division is the Farm Storage Facility Loan Program. Here, hang on, I need to take a drink. So our Farm Storage Facility Loan Program, um, this one, first we're going to talk about the loan terms. And we have um, terms of three, five, seven, ten, or twelve years, and within those, we break them down in, into three price categories. And if 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 your loan project comes in at a hundred thousand dollars or less, um, you have the option of a three, five, or seven year loan. If your loan comes in between a hundred thousand and two hundred fifty thousand, uh, you have the option of a three, five, seven, or ten year loan. And then if it's 250000 up to 500000 you have all five-year terms as an option, 3, 5, 7, 10, or 12. There is a loan, a loan limit of, of $500,000 per loan. And with that, we often have the question that, so I can only have a project that's $500,000 max. Now, We've had in the past where you can have multiple loans. So say, for instance, um, you're doing a project that's going to be costing $800,000. In that case, um, you would apply on two loans. So you would have one loan for $500,000, and you would have a second loan for $300,000. And a producer can have as many loans as they want. It's just each one will be capped at the $500,000. 
Now for our interest rates, um, for April um, this year, we have quite quite low rates uh, for our three-year and our five-year long terms. Um, it's it's currently at 0.75 percent. Uh, for our seven and ten-year loans, it's at one percent, and for our twelve-year, it is 1.125 percent. And unlike the commodity loans, like I talked about earlier, um, the interest rate remains the same throughout the entire term of the FSFL or the facility loan. So those, so those will stay the same. But keep in mind, um, our application process um, will take at least 30 days. So um, just because you come in in April, you may not necessarily get that April interest rate. So just some more general information on this. Um, there is a $100 application fee per FSSL applicant. Um, there's a required down payment of 15% for the regular FSSL loans. Um, all compliance with NEPA is, is required. So that would be all of our environmental. And as an applicant, you must show a storage need when the loan is for storage bins. So our FSFL loans for our storage bins, dryers, and handling equipment, uh, those carry a six-month loan approval to allow construction to be completed. FSFL loans are closed and funding dispersed following completion of construction. So when a producer comes in, or I should say a borrower, um, and they want to request a loan, the form that you use in this case would be a CCC 185. And again, that can be submitted by mail, fax, phone, or electronically. Um, additional documents that, that will be necessary, such as your construction estimates, permits, lien waivers, etc., those can be submitted by mail or electronically. Eligible equipment. So not only um, are new and used grain, grain bins eligible, um, also is portable or any permanently affixed grain handling and drying equipment. Um, any renovations of existing farm storage facilities are also eligible. Um, most recently, storage and handling trucks, and then also liquid propane storage tanks. Um, those would be to fuel and grain dryers. So what, what's really crucial um, from the borrower is uh, we have three important actions that, that can't happen before approval. Um, and so, and this can happen at the actual site of the location. And this, this has to be before an environmental review is successfully completed and the loan application is approved. So um, you cannot accept delivery of equipment and or materials. And again, this is at the FSFL site. Um, there can't be any site preparation or foundation construction because we need to have an environmental assessment of the land done. And no alterations to any structures that are 50 years old or older or within a historic district. So again, those are three main components that really cannot happen um, prior to your loan approval. So for our portable structures, our handling equipment, as well as the storage and handling trucks, um, you must complete that purchase after loan approval. Uh, again, there's a minimum down payment that is required. And FSFL funds are then dispersed to complete the acquisition or the purchase of whether it's, whether it's um, you know, the portable structure, um, you know, say, say it's a conveyor, say it's a handling truck. So a little bit different um, when it comes to portable. So security. So the Commodity Credit Corporation um, requires additional security for FSFL loans when um, our, our loan amount exceeds $100,000 or the borrower's outstanding aggregate loan balance exceeds 
$100,000. So say we have two loans with FSA. Um, if, if, if the combination of those two facility loans um, is above $100,000, that's when we'd be asking for additional security from the borrower. So we have two forms of additional security that can be used. Um, we can ask for real estate. And within that, we ask that um, CCC's interest in the real estate um, to be superior to all other lien holders. So we ask that we're in a first lien position. The second option for, for additional security is an irrevocable letter of credit. And um, that, that letter of credit must cover the entire loan amount for, for the term of the loan. And that's usually done in conjunction with a credit union or, or a bank. Now, if real estate's being used, there's two types of valuations that we can use. Uh, we can just use an appraisal, which the appraisal amount needs to come in at at least 100% of the FSFL amount, so for the amount of the project, or for the loan amount, I should say. Uh, the second is the North Dakota Department of Trust land values is, what, is what's mostly used. And when using those values, um, it, it must be at least 125% of the FSFL amount. So we, we have two different scenarios that generally happen. So if your facility structure is going to be built on real estate that's going to be mortgaged to CCC, so um, say, say you're going to be putting up a grain bin on, on a quarter of land, and on that quarter, um, you're also going to be offering that to us as security. The value for the structure um, that we will give you will actually be 40% um, of the actual loan amount. Um, on the flip side, if you're offering real estate that's, that's not tied to that green bin, um, a value for the structure will be equal to 20% of, of the loan amount. So we'll still give you We'll still give you credit for that loan amount. However, it's going to be 20% less if it's not located on that underlying security. So again, social distancing. Um, we are required to conduct a site visit at the location of the proposed construction prior to loan approval. And so again, I'm going to go through just a few um, additional steps that we've adopted so that we can get this done so we can still, you know, ensure that these applications can, can be pushed through so we can um, continue to work on them. So again, um, uh, the FSA employees will contact you via phone to discuss the scheduled visit. So again, no forms requ are required for signature from you at the time of the visit. Um, the borrower will be provided date of the scheduled visit, anticipated time of arrival, as well as the, as the vehicle description and anticipated duration of the visit. Um, also, the borrower will be provided county office telephone number to report any questions or concerns prior to FSA's arrival for the scheduled visit. And again, no, no contact is necessary. Um, you as a borrower don't need to be out there with, with the FSA employee. Um, so again, all of the you know, directions where they need to go and everything else will all be worked out on the phone prior to their arrival. All of our forms, uh, both for our commodity loans and, and facility loans, can be found on the FSA website. Uh, and the following link I, I have listed below. Okay. Do we have any questions? Uh, Matt, we were going to go ahead and have Brad make a few comments, and then we'd uh, double back for questions after that. Oh, OK. OK, sorry about that. No, no problem at all. So uh, uh, Brad Tyson is the uh, executive director of FSA in North Dakota. And so Brad, uh, the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Dave and, and Miranda, for doing this. Uh, Matt, can you put up your, your slide presentation? And we'll step through this last slides. Uh, that we have here to wrap it up. Uh, and also, yes. thanks. To, yeah, thank you. There, it's, um, oh. Oh, sorry, Brad. Sorry, sorry, I gotta grab one, one other one and then I'll do it here. 
Uh, also, thanks to Kim and Matt for uh, presenting on that behalf. And just for those that are listening, uh, we appreciate the working relationship that we have with NDSU. And we hope that these tools are very beneficial, especially during a time when you can't walk into the office and pick up a pamphlet or you can't get uh, something that you, by having an actual social interaction. So we're doing our best for social distancing, but still getting the information out there for people to uh, uh, see in that. Um, things that I was going to hit on is the fact that we have uh, gov delivery is a big thing. Uh, Farmers.gov is another website that uh, we can uh, use for, you know, making contacts with you as producers or you as the general public to access some of these programs that Kim and, and Matt have alluded to. Uh, and with the uh, with that, you can access our email addresses for most of our counties. I think Matt, uh, are we getting that up there, Matt? Am I seeing that? I'm having a few technical difficulties. Let, uh, okay. Let me see if I can. Give me one more. Give me one more try here. Okay. And. Okay. I got it, Brad. You got it? All right. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So we're down on screen about 82, I think, Matt. Yep. It's populating now i'm hoping so they're right there uh 81 actually so if we want to uh, 80 starting at 80 it's got the gov delivery but i'm just going to glance through these um we have gov delivery and then uh farmers.gov another one like kim and, and matt have alluded to and then we do not have a loan presence in every one of our offices across uh north dakota we have a 19 service back we're right there, Matt. Yep. And the bigger dots there will show where we do have loan presence, but that doesn't mean you can't contact your local county office and the smaller ones there, and they will forward on to the service center that will be servicing that county. So uh, the biggest thing is reach out and, and we'll make sure that we start connecting the dots and get some loan officer uh, connected with you. Next slide, Matt. And we'll scroll through these. These are these will be part of the presentation. These are the counties that uh, have their actual email address on, and that's uh, kind of our new new vehicle of communication. Is that uh, email this county directly, and we will get somebody to respond back to you. So that would be your first step. And like I said before, Farmers.gov is another another way to access these things. Next, and some more communication sources. Uh, as we're learning, you know, this coronavirus is putting up new stipulations. One thing I want to mention is if you drive by a service center and you don't see a lot of vehicles out there, that does not mean we're closed. That just means that we're doing our part for social distancing and that we're keeping our employees safe and also keeping our doors locked so that we don't have that interaction with uh, customers right now. But as we're hearing in the news media lately, that things are starting to relax and we're trying to open up uh, business. So stay tuned and we'll get more information out as time goes on and um here you got some contact information uh kim and brian are at the on the direct loans or the guaranteed loans and of course matt and brian are on our market assistance loans and also on our farm storage loans farm storage loans have been a very very popular tool and like matt alluded to in his presentation the interest rates are very very attractive the sad part is right now there's not a lot of cash out in the countryside to be building a lot of stuff but uh, it's it's a great tool that uh, FSA has and and I just want to make sure the public knows about that so with that I'm going to kind of wrap it up are there any questions for Matt or myself yeah so I have one uh, is it possible to refinance a facility loan at all to get lower interest rates that we're seeing um no, it is not. Once, well, once you lock in that loan, um, you know, once you're approved for it, you're approved in the month in which your approval takes place. Great. Thanks, Matt. Another question. Uh, has the deadline to get a loan on our 2019 wheat been extended past the March 31 deadline? No, those dates are statutory. Um, those, the, those dates will not are not allowed to change. Um, under that CARES Act, um, all that was changed was if a request has been made, um, you know, by that March 31st deadline. So, so unfortunately, no, those, those dates can't change. 
Great. And, and if there's any more questions, uh, please enter them in the group chat. Uh, just to remind everybody uh, that a recording of this video and all the slides will be posted to the NDSU Extension Farm Management webpage. Uh, and next week, we'll uh, have the last in this series uh, talking about ARC PLC uh, and acreage reporting. So I'll give you guys just a few seconds here, a, a last chance to, to ask any questions. And please take a couple seconds to answer our poll. We have two poll questions. Um, and I'll keep this one open for a couple more seconds before closing it and launching the second one. And if you have any additional com comments about the usefulness of today's um, webinar session, please put those in the chat box also. We appreciate any feedback you have. Uh, and here's a, another question. Would it be beneficial to talk to our representatives to get those farm facility loans to be refinanced? Um, is it, would it be beneficial? Yes. Um, I mean, surely they, you know, you, you can talk to them as well. I mean, we would, in, if, if that's something that they want to go or that avenue, you know, surely it's, it's just not something that we're able to do or have the authority to do within the office. Yeah, thanks, Ralph. I'll, I'll help a little bit there too, Dave. But <clears throat> you know, these these loans have always been at a discounted rate to the general public. I mean, it's one of those things where they've gotten an interest break at the onset. But just what Matt alluded to, the fact that everything's open for negotiations, and we're not going to stop anybody from talking to their representative on it. But, uh, right now, it's, it's it's they're locked for the life of the loan. You bet. And then there is a follow up to that too. If, if you've heard any rumblings uh, with the aid packages that, that something like this might be possible. Well, the CARES Act is, uh, we're writing the rules right now as we speak. Uh, Congress has allocated the money and of course now we have to find out the vehicles to uh, get that funds out to the producers or out to the general public. So uh, any input is going to be uh, taken into consideration, but uh, that doesn't mean it's going to happen just because you ask. So I think people have to be smart. Asking's a good thing, and then expecting it to go your way—that's a whole nother game right there. But uh, everybody has their has their wish list, and it's a good time to get that uh, voiced right now. Right, thanks. Uh, and seeing that there's no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up uh, for today. And again, I just want to thank uh, our speakers, Kim, Matt, and Brad, for for speaking. Uh, you can. Go to the farm management website to, to, to check out the a recording of this uh, webinar and all the slides uh, if you get a chance the poll is very helpful uh, and again any comments that you other comments you might have uh, feel free to use the chat and again next week at the same time uh, we'll be talking about arc plc uh and and reporting so we'll see you yeah. Thanks.